This is MJ and today I'm going to be giving you a demonstration on how to work up our leopard print blanket. So I'm using Bernat Softy Chunky for this design and I'm using black, linen, and also pumpkin. I'm using an 11.5 millimeter crochet hook for this design and this is a Susan Bates crystallite hook but an 11 or a 12 millimeter would work fine as well. So for this design, you will need the pattern. I'm only working through a small demonstration with you. And with the pattern, you are going to receive two sizes. So you'll get your child in adult size. You can also modify it with a smaller hook and yarn to get uh, your baby sizes. So what will be included with the pattern is your graph for your child and adult. They're different graphs in different sizes. So our child is gonna end up being about 44 inches wide. So you'll get a nice large copy of this if this is how you prefer to work, but you will also receive the written pattern as well. It won't be quite in this format, but just for my working purposes, I have this printed out and what I like to do is highlight the pattern as I go. Okay, so a couple things about this design. It's worked in extended single crochet stitches. And also I have carried my yarn. You don't have to carry your yarn. You could, if you prefer to use bobbins, you could do that. Um, you can cut and weave those ends but I chose not to do that for this design and I really don't mind the little pop through of color throughout. It doesn't bother me, but if this does bother you, you can certainly have bobbins and drop your yarn and pick up as you go. That's completely fine. It just ultimately is gonna be a little bit more work. But I know everyone has their preference but I don't like weaving in ends and I like to keep things pretty simple. So I chose to do the pattern this way. So I'm just chaining one and turning and I'm gonna work through a row here with you. Now I didn't carry my ends along here just because I knew that I wouldn't be picking it up till later. And you can kind of look at the rows ahead and you can always do that, drop them off and then pick them back up if you know you're not gonna need the color. So most of the edge, I haven't pulled it to the end, but I actually kind of like the thickness that carrying the yarn gives the blanket. It makes it really nice and thick and cozy. So now what I'm gonna do is take a look at my pattern and I know I need to do eight in the main color. So I'm going to work an extended single crochet. So pull up, yarn over, and then pull through two. So go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pull through two. Go through the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, pull through two. So that's how you do your extended single crochet. And I also have a tutorial just on that. If you need a little bit more review before beginning this design, I'll have a pop-up for that. Okay, so I've made one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm coming to my ends. I know I'm gonna need to get them picked up. So there's seven, 
and eight. So I'll pull through one, and now I'm gonna look again at my pattern. I really highlight as I go because I've me I mess up if I don't keep track. So I highlight off that I've done my eight and main color, and now I have one in A, which is my black, and then I have four in main color. So sometimes I can sort of do a couple at a time. So I'm going to yarn over with my black. Now I'm actually on my wrong side right now. So I want to pull, whenever I'm on my wrong side, I want to try to pull my tails to the wrong side. This one can actually stay there. So we're going to yarn over and I want to carry those colors and I'm doing one black. So I yarn over once, just pull my black here and then I'm yarning back over with the main color and I'm going to carry those along. The important thing when carrying is that you're just making sure that they're not too loose you don't want them bunching up between the stitches. So one, two, three, four. So I pull to make sure that they're not bunching on this side. And I'm just going to come back to my work here and I'm going to highlight that I've done my black and my four in main color and then the next two I can usually look at two is going to be um, two black and then 14 in the main color so yarn over with the black we're doing two in the black one two and then 14 in the main color. That's just pulled there. So there's one, two, three, four. So I've worked across 14 and I'm just looking at the back of my work, giving those a little tug. I'm going to check out my pattern again, highlighting off that I've done now my 14. And now I need to do five in black and 11 in the main color. Again, I have, I've mainly been working with the black and the main color, so they're still to this wrong side of my work. Oops. So yarn over and pull through with the black. And then I have five black. So one. Two, three, four, five, and I always make sure my yarn is pulled and then move the black out of the way, yarning over with the main color. And as you can see, the orange has just been coming along for the ride but it's there when we need it. So now we need to do 11 in our main color. So I'll work those across. Okay, so I worked over my 11. Just gonna move that kind of out of the way. And I'm just looking at my pattern again. I've highlighted off what I've worked. Now we're gonna do two black then two orange, then two black. So we're yarning over the black. St 
still carrying along all the colors. So two, one. And now we're gonna yarn over with the orange. So we're doing two with our orange. And our orange would be fine to stay back there if we were on the right side, but since we're on the wrong side, I'm gonna pull it forward just while I yarn over here. So we're yarning back over with the black and we're doing two in black. And now I'm gonna put the orange back here just keep it out of the way. I like to kind of have all my balls in one place to keep everything organized. So my two black and then I need to do two in the main color. So I'll pull my black forward and switch over to the main color. And we're going to work two now in the main color. One, two. So I'm just gonna stop for a second and scratch off what I've done. Okay, so I scratch those off and then we're gonna do a black and five orange. So we'll yarn over with the black. We just do one in the black. And then we're picking up our orange and doing five. Okay, and then we're gonna have two black. So I'm pulling my orange here to the wrong side yarning over with the black and even carrying the yarn it is this is a time-consuming project it doesn't go fast you have to just take your time so we have four in the black now one And you could certainly follow along with the graph and use like a piece of paper or ruler just to move your way up as well. Whatever really is your preferred, but I wanted to include both options in the pattern. I myself like looking at the written pattern. Uh, it's nice to have both options. Okay, and now we're getting to the end here. One, two, three, four, five, perfect. If you end off correctly that's a good sign it means you haven't messed up along the way so we yarn over and now we're just finishing with the main color so now what I like to do is I just look ahead so main color five and then I'm going to do four of the main color and then I'll be picking back up my black and orange again so I don't need to carry these across all the way if I don't want to, maybe just the one stitch because I know at four I'll be picking the black back up. There's one, two, three. Keep getting a little bit of a knot in the center of my ball here as I'm pulling. And there's our five stitches and then we'll be chaining one and turning and depending on where your balls are I'm gonna turn just that I go like this 
And then my balls should be in the right spots to keep working across again. Okay, so now that I'm to the right side, I'm just gonna work through a little bit of this with you. And then that's all I'll show you with the color changes. So we're doing four. So four in main color, and then we're changing to black for two stitches. So now that I'm on my right side, I'm just dropping that off to the wrong side. We, or we don't have to pull it forward like I was doing before. So now we'll pick up the black, pull that through. Now we're gonna carry the main color and we're gonna carry the orange. So we'll do a black stitch. One more black stitch. And then we're picking up orange for seven. Again, I'm always making sure I'm kind of tugging on those ones that I'm carrying. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm picking up black again and working two in the black. And at this point, I wanna make sure that I highlight off what I've worked so I don't lose track, because I will. And now I will do three in the main color. So what, like I see, I just try to keep them in separate locations that I'm just picking them up, that I'm not getting tangled or anything. So one, two, and there's three. It's always a little easier when you're on the right side because you don't have to worry about pulling any of the yarn towards you. So three, and then I'm doing one black. And two orange. Another suggestion if you really don't like the carrying or the orange would be the easiest one to have bobbins if you were just going to do one bobbin because we're not, it's the least used, the black and main color we use quite a bit. If you're looking for some alternatives and there's lots of videos out there showing how to work um, with bobbins so you can always track one of those down. I don't have any bobbin, uh, videos yet up showing that but there's lots of other, probably um, the crochet crowd would be a good resource for that. Okay, so then we're picking up black again for two stitches. Dropping the black, picking up main color now for one stitch. And then I'm working three black. One, two, three, and an orange. So easy, honestly. I, other than if you don't like those bits popping up it's so easy to carry the yarn it's just what color you need is there so one drop it now we need black and I'm 
doing three. So I think this is all I'm going to show you here now. I might just pop back on when I get to the end of this row. As you can see, this is how it's looking. So I've worked all the way across. And now again, when I turn, I just want to turn so that my balls kind of stay in the same place. And I just move the blanket. Then I'm on to pull the, these guys. I'm on to my wrong side again. And so I'll make sure I'm pulling the balls towards me when I change their color to keep all the tails to the wrong side of the work. Okay, so we're gonna be working on the hood. So we'll be starting off with our main color. So let's make a slip knot and put that on the hook. We're gonna start with a chain of nine for the child size. Now we'll work in the second chain from the hook, an extended single crochet. And in each of the next six, so there's one, so seven in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so now in the last chain, we're going to do two extended single crochets. So we're going to be making our corner here. And now we're turning our work so that we're working down the opposite side of the chain. And our first chain here is basically the same space that we're in. So we'll work two more extended single crochets. So now we have four that are making that curve and just pull that tail tight to pull that in and then we'll crochet over it as we work down. And you want to work seven extended single crochets down now the opposite side of the chain to equal our other side. Okay, so that is row one, and this is starting off the back of the hood. So now we'll chain one and turn. So your pattern includes the graph plus the written pattern of how the hood is gonna work. So for row two now, we're working, let's look at this the right way. So the rows are labeled at the bottom. So for row two, I'm gonna work two of the main color I'm gonna work a black, an orange, a black, and then my main color. It's hard to see because I don't have a colored printer, so I kind of just colored in some of my, my um, bits on the chart there. But basically you wanna follow along with the written pattern or the graph, and this is why it's important to have the pattern for this design. So we're gonna work two in the main color and then we're changing to black so this is very similar to how I showed you how we're working how we work the blanket section except now we're just working in a different shape basically we're gonna carry our yarn the same way so we'll work one in black and now we need to pick up 
our orange. Pull that through. We want to carry along our black and our main color. And now we're switching back to black. For one stitch. And then we're back to the main color. And now we're carrying these along. So what we're gonna do now is work two in the main color. So one, two. So now in total we should have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we get to some increases. So the next four stitches we're working two extended single crochet in each stitch. And our row two here is our right side. So working two extended single crochets in each of the next four stitches. So this row we increase by four stitches in total. Now we're going to work one extended single crochet in each of the next two in our main color. And then I'm changing to orange. So dropping off the main color, picking up orange, and we're going to work two in our orange color. And then I'm changing to black. I'm keeping all my strands here separated so that we're not twisting up. I've kind of got the main color going to the front, the blacks in the middle, and the orange to the back. And now we finish off with two in the main color. So I'll pick that back up. Okay, so there is row two now. So now for row three, we'll chain one and turn. And now I'm going to turn this way just to keep my tails where they need to be. And now we're following the color pattern changes the same as row two. We're just doing more increases again. So let's start out with two in the main color. I'm just picking that up, pulling that along. Remember, this is the wrong side, so it's not going to look as nice, but that's okay. And now when we change color, remember, I like to keep my tails to the wrong side of the work. So we're just following here our established pattern. So I'm going to do black for one. And pulling that to this side now. Then I'm changing to orange and working. Sorry, I'm getting off, I think, my camera here. Work two in the orange. One, two, three, four, five. So now this time we need to work three in the main color because we want to have eight stitches before we start our increases. So there's three. Okay, and again, we're doing increases. So this time we're working our increases in one, um, two in each of the next six stitches. So I'm going to work those increases and then I'll meet you up. 
So two in each of the next six stitches. I didn't really tug it that well on my last round. Just make sure you give it a tug so that you're not having the yarn bunch up through. Once the increases are done, we're gonna do one extended in each of the next three in our main color. And then we're following this color pattern, so black, orange, black. So I'm gonna pull that to my wrong side black and then orange and then back to black And then I'm finishing up with two in the main color. And chain one and turn. And we need to give those a tug again. So now we're back to the right side, it's always easier when we're working on the right side as we're not concerned about moving the balls the same. So I'm just gonna get them all lined up. So now for row four, we're not doing any increases, but we're gonna have color changes still. And I'm really just gonna work through the increases with you on this and then you'll be good to go with the pattern because it is a lot of work to go through the entire thing. Same as the blanket. So we're starting off with two in the main color. And then we're working three in black. change to black one two three and again make sure we're tugging as we go along now I'm changing back to the main color for one stitch and then I'm changing back to black for a total of five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna work 12 in the main color. So grabbing my main color, pulling it through, and we're gonna work 12, which basically brings us back down here to the orange. So I'm gonna work that and then I'll meet you up. Okay, and now we're changing to black. Again, always try and keep your three pieces like separate locations and you won't get tangled, it really helps. And I actually really like, we're doing three now in black, I really like the pop of color that comes through and also the thickness this gives the hood, it just is gonna give it a lot more stability when you're wearing it. And I continue to carry that orange through even though this round we weren't using it. So now we'll change back to the main color and finish off those last two stitches. Make 
sure everything's tugged good as you go. And now we're going to be going on to row five, which is our final increase. So we're back onto our wrong side. So remember this, this row is a little bit more work as we got to pull our tails across. And we're starting off with one, two, three, four, five, six, six in our main color. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to work. Make sure I pull that. We're going to work two in orange next. One, two, and then two in black. So now if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we work 10, which is what we need to do before we start the increases. So we're changing back to main color. And we're going to work increases all in the main color. And we're doing two in each of the next eight. So two extended singles in each of the next eight. So this round we're going up by eight stitches. So I'll work those across and I'll then meet you up again. Okay, so I've worked my two in every eight, which is going into the first of the black. So this round increases by eight stitches and now we're changing to black for one stitch. And then we're working orange for three. And we're finishing off the rest of the row all in the main color. So at this point now you should have 36 stitches in total and we won't be working any more increases for the hood as we work kind of the it's going to start to fold over and come down and take the hood shape. If you just kept increasing, you'd basically be just increasing this flat piece, but because we stopped doing the increases, it will fold itself over. you give them a tug so this is the right side of how things are looking so we're just carrying this leopard print throughout the hood so I'm going to continue to work the rest of my hood off camera pause the video grab your pattern there is a pattern also for the adult size hood if that's what you're working on and go through the remaining rows to complete your hood. Okay, so I'm gonna work through how to make the face piece and the nose 
on our leopard. So we're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 11. And now in the second chain from the hook, so there's one, two, we're just going to work across single crochet stitches. So now this will be the top part of the face piece. So we're working from where it will go on the top of the hood down to the nose. Okay, so I've worked across and you should have 10 single crochet stitches. Now we'll chain one and turn and for row two, we're just working one single crochet into every stitch across. So our chain one is not included as a stitch. So you should have 10 single crochets. We'll chain one and turn and for row three now we're starting to decrease. So we're doing a single crochet, two tog across the first two. So pull up a loop, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And then work across until we have our two, two stitches remaining to the last two stitches. Okay, so now we'll decrease these stitches as well. So go through, pull up a loop, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one and turn. So we now only have eight stitches and for this row we'll just work across our eight stitches. So row four is just working single crochets across. Okay, so I have chain one and turn and for row five we're doing another decrease. Decrease the first two. We're working across to the last two stitches. Okay, and now our last two stitches, another decrease. So we've now reduced to six stitches and we'll chain one in turn. And now row six through 13, we'll be working just one single crochet in every stitch across. So there's row six, chain one and turn, and work the next seven through 13 with just single crochets, six stitches for each row. Okay, so I've worked up my 13 rows and now you want to leave a long tail you want to cut that leaving a long tail so that you have enough yarn to seam this onto the hood so now I'm going to show you how to make the nose that we're going to attach down here to the bottom so with your nine millimeter hook and black we'll make a magic circle And we're chaining three. Now we're going to work six double crochet in the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then what we're going to do is chain three and slip stitch down into the ring. You can fasten that off with a tail for sewing. And we need to tighten this ring up. So we're gonna pull the tail the loop that's starting to pull in, grab it, pull it, and pull that one tight. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to seam the nose to the face piece. So we have six stitches and we have six stitches, which makes it really easy for this to go right along here. Okay, so how we're going to do this is let's get our tail up here to this part of, whoops, of the nose so that we can go easily through each stitch. So I'm just going through the one loop. Let's do that first one twice just to get that secured well. And now every stitch, we're going through the one loop of the nose, the one loop of the face piece. Okay, so now you can see how the nose is all attached to the piece. You can actually leave, we can weave this in or you could actually leave this tail. Let's just kind of knot it here for when you sew it onto the hood. You kind of want to just push that nose in. We'll sit these pieces aside and then we're going to make the little round pieces for the mouth that will sit underneath. So we'll make a magic circle, the nine millimeter hook, chain two, and we'll work 10 double crochet into the ring. Once you have your 10 made, you're gonna pull your tail. And one of the loops will start to pull in, grab that loop to pull the other one tight and then just take your tail and pull. So now we're gonna slip stitch to join in that first double crochet. And then we'll chain two, which is not included as a stitch and we'll work a double crochet in the first stitch. We'll work two in the next. So we're increasing every second stitch. So we'll do one double crochet and then we'll do two double crochets. Okay, and just repeat that all the way around. So now you should have a total of 15 stitches and we're going to slip stitch to join. So now you want to make two of these and then once you have your two made, what we're going to do is we're just going to seam them together. So I'm not going to work through the second one, but you'll fasten this off. You'll put your two circles together. And then you're just going to seam them together. So that's going to go across probably one, two, three, four, five, maybe about six stitches. You're going to seam the two pieces together. Okay, so I already uh, seamed on this part of our face right here. So I just sewed all the way around and just stuffed with a little bit of polyester fiber fill. And now I'm just placing the face piece in the center and instead of having that nose pop out I've just sort of pushed it in and I'm gonna make sure that I 
seam this down after. You don't want to sew this part of the nose on with the linen. You want to make sure you use black for that. But right now I'm just going to seam on this part of the face. So I've attached it here already. Then you just want to pick up a bit of the yarn on the hood and work that through. If you want to give it a little bit of an indentation, you can. You're just wanting Keep an eye that you are getting it sewn on there so that it's even on the hood. Okay, and I'm going to keep working around that. And I'm just working along the top here, making sure this piece is going right up to the top of your hood. Okay, and again, I just want to double check as I'm working down this side that I'm keeping this, seaming it on as even as possible. And so I'm just seaming to here and then I'm going to weave in my end or if you want you can leave your end to weave until the end just to make sure you have everything positioned correctly. If you make any mistakes it's sometimes nice to be able to pull that back. So my tail's not very long here so I may need to use some more black yarn to finish off. So what I want to do is just make sure that I seam this down, that it is secured. And I just want this coming down here as well. But like I say, this isn't quite long enough. So I'm probably going to have to grab another piece for weaving. But then just you can add the line going down between his mouth there if you want. So we're going to make a magic circle. Wrapping the yarn around your index finger three times. Grab that first loop. Pull it through and we're chaining two. Now work eight double crochet in the ring. There's two, three, four, five. Six, 
seven, eight. Now we're gonna tighten up the ring. You see how one of your loops is pulling in? So take that, grab it, and it's gonna pull the other loop tight. Now just take your tail and pull chain one and turn. We're not joining it. Now we're going to work a single crochet in the first stitch and two single crochet in the next stitch. And we're repeating that along. So one single crochet and then two single crochet. One, two, one, and two. So you should now have 12 stitches. We're just gonna fasten that off with a tail for sewing. Now, what you can do is take this tail and weave it. So I have a needle here for bulky yarn. Makes it easy with the big head. And then you can just trim that. You see the nice stitching right here. So now we'll put that aside and we're going to make a little inner piece for the ear as well. So again, a magic circle. Chain two. And this time we're going to work half doubles and we're going to do six in the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tighten up that ring. We're not going to join, but we're not doing another round either. We're just leaving it at that, fastening off with a tail for seaming. And I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to get it weaved and out of the way. So now this piece is ready for us to seam right in here. So I'm just gonna take my yarn needle and we're just gonna start seaming this to the outer ear piece. Across the bottom. And then we need to seam it all inside here. So you're just grabbing a piece of the outer ear, going through one stitch of you know it's hard to tell with the black but I'm just going through the one loop of the stitch and you just do that all the way around and I weaved in that end when I was finished and I'm just going to trim that now this is how the ear looks now what you can do is you can brush it out if you want sort of a fuzzy look um, the ears definitely if you look at a real leopard like if they're really fuzzy in this inside you don't have to do this step but if you want to give it sort of this fuzzy look you can if not you can just leave it like that and that looks cute as well so that's just personal preference whether you want to get some fuzz going you just take a brush and brush it out and seaming is really easy once we have the face piece on we're just seaming to either side so it makes it really simple. You're just taking your yarn needle I like to sometimes just kind of get that get the edges sort of tucked in a little bit
So I start off doing that and then, oops, just going through the hood and then through the ear. So once you're sure that's positioned on correctly, you can then just weave this end. And always when we're weaving, we're weaving one way and back in the opposite direction. The bigger needles can be a little harder to push through, but just takes a bit of digging. And then you can trim this end. Now the eyes are really simple. I've just used black buttons and I've used some um, worsted weight black yarn and one of my finer yarn needles I've just sewn the buttons on and then what I did is I just took my yarn needle with the worsted weight and I weaved up and down and then I made another little loop here weaved through here and then I weaved up a little bit and then I went back over those pieces so that I went over them twice and it just sort of gives a little bit of extra detailing to the eye and you can do that on this side as well. I haven't worked through that with you but it's really simple just weaving to get that shape and if you don't like how it looks just cut it take it off and try again but it's pretty simple just to embroider this little bit of an eyelash on. Okay so for the blanket we're ending on our wrong side of our work going to chain one and turn and I'm going to just leave the yarn I have left here attached for when we place the hood on the top of the blanket because what we'll do is we'll continue to single crochet one more row around and around the hood so I'm just going to leave that there to come back to and I've already measured out to evenly place my hood so you want to measure your blanket and your hood and you just want to evenly space. So I know I need 16 stitches on each side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 16. And I'm just going to place my marker in the 16th stitch. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And now the hood should go between those markers and that's where we'll seam it. So the back of the hood is gonna go against the right side of the blanket. You'll need your yarn needle for both the yarn. So I just have my yarn needle here and now we're gonna seam the hood To the blanket. So now we want to seam not this part but all the back part here.
And if you need to pin it, that's fine. Or clip it just to make sure that you're doing it even as you go. And once you get all the way across, you just wanna weave that end in and then you can trim that off. I'm just gonna take my markers out. And I'm gonna join back on So now what you want to do is start working across in single crochet stitches. So we're not working extended, just work singles. So I'm going to work across and I'll meet you at the hood. So once you get to the hood, we're just going to go right into that first stitch of the hood and just work our single crochets across the hood. I am using for this all this edging the larger hook. So I'm going to work that across and I'll meet you up on the other side. And I'm just coming down the hood the other side. Then I'm just picking up the next stitch along the blanket. And once we get to the corner, I'll meet you back up again. So in the corner, we're gonna add three single crochet. It'll just make a nice curve. And then we need to start working down the side of the blanket. And roughly you're just sticking your hook in where it just goes through easily. So it should be about one single crochet per row. So you just want to make sure you have an even number of stitches on each side of the blanket. So that it doesn't end up looking lopsided. And you don't want it looking too bunchy or too pulled. So one should have it lay nice and smooth as you go. Once you reach the next corner, you're doing the same thing. We're adding three single crochet into the corner and we're just continuing to work around the entire blanket and you can slip stitch to join at the start of where we started working the single crochet across the top. Okay, so I've just worked around and I'm just gonna slip stitch to that first to join. Fasten off and then we can start weaving in all these loose ends that I have throughout. Okay, so now we're gonna make the little paw that we attach to the blanket. So this one is a good size. This is a child size. So you could make it a little bit smaller if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go with this size for my blanket. So we'll begin with a magic circle. Wrap the yarn around your index finger three times. Take your hook, sliding it through all three pieces grabbing your first and pulling it through and chain one. Now work 10 single crochet in the ring. Now push your work out of the way so you can see those loops. Take your tail, start pulling it. One of your loops will pull in, but the other one won't. So take the loop that's pulled in and pull it and it will pull that other loop. Now just take your tail and pull. So now that makes a nice tight circle. Slip stitch into that first single crochet to join. Chain one and now we'll work two single crochet in every stitch. 
So we're increasing from 10 to 20 stitches. You can count as you go around just to make sure and I'll meet you up when I'm finished. Okay, so I have 20 stitches. Now I'll slip stitch in the first single crochet to join. Chain one, and now we're just working one single crochet in every stitch around. So we won't do any more increases for the remainder of our paw. So you wanna do a total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rounds. So this is round three. So you'll just repeat round three until you have a total of twelve. Now I'll be using black worsted weight yarn to do the pads that we're adding to our paw. So I'm going to use a 5.5 millimeter hook and this is just some Bernat Super Value but really any black worsted weight yarn will be fine. So I've already worked up three but we need four in total of our small and then just one of our large. So we're going to make a magic circle just like I've shown you already. It's going to be harder to see with the black and in that magic circle we're going to chain one. We're going to work two single crochet. We're going to work a half double crochet. Then we're going to work three double crochet. One, two, three, a half double crochet, and then two single crochet. And like I've shown you before, to close up that ring, we're pulling the tail. Whatever loop pulls in, that's the loop you want to pull. To pull the other loop, then just pull your tail, slip stitch in that first single crochet to join, and then fasten off with a tail for sewing. So you're going to want to make four of these pieces. We'll weave in all these tails in the back to hide them, but we'll leave the long ending tail to sew. And to make our larger pad, we'll do a magic circle as well. Chain two. And this time we're going to work nine double crochet in the ring. So I've worked to my nine double crochet. I'm going to pull my ring tight. I'm going to slip stitch in the first double crochet to join chain one. We'll work two single crochet in the first stitch. We'll work two single crochet in the next stitch. We'll work two half double crochet in the next stitch. We'll work two double crochet in the next three stitches. There's one stitch, two, three, two half double crochet in the next, and two single crochet in each of the next two. Now we'll slip stitch that to join, fastening off with a long tail again for sewing to the paw. So now that we have all our pieces, I'm going to get my ends weaved in and get them ready to put on the paw. 
Okay, so I finished my paw and you wanna just make sure that you have the tail to the side. And then you want to fit it here so that the tail's up to the top. And then before you start sewing, you can kind of just make sure that they're all going to fit. and I've already done one so I can kind of look at how I've seamed but I'm keeping all my tails up to the top so they all go the same way so basically like this so you can kind of arrange it beforehand and then I'm gonna start with the largest I want to make sure I kind of do it the same as I, I did this one. So all you're going to do is just make sure you're only going through the one side of your mitten. And you're just going to seam all the way around. And I'm just going through the one loop of the stitch not both so i'll complete doing that for this and then i'll sew on my other little pads as well and you can try to give it its shape as you're seaming it too making that go in a little bit more narrow and this coming out a bit wider at the bottom. And you can do the same for the tinier ones as well. Okay, so now to attach our paws, this here is the right side of my blanket and I'm just folding it over. So the right side, we wanna put the mitten on like this. So the, the side without the, the pads, we're going to lay that across the right side of the blanket. Take your yarn needle. And then we're just going to seam them to the blanket. just the one side of the mitten, leaving it open. Then just that final stitch, go through twice, and then we're just gonna weave these ends to secure them. So we're going to go one way and then back in the opposite direction. And just make sure that it's not pulled in too tight and then you can trim the end and do the same thing for the other mitt. Okay, so we're gonna be working on the tail. So we're gonna begin with a magic circle. So wrap the yarn around your index finger three times. Put your hook through and we'll chain one. Now work eight single crochet in the ring.
So now we just want to pull the ring tight. So take your tail, start pulling it, and one of your loops will start pulling in. So the loop that's pulled in, you want to grab it, pull it, and it'll pull the other loop, and then just take your tail and pull. So now we're going to slip stitch in our first single crochet to join and chain one. Now we're going to work around one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of eight. Once you've worked around your eight, we're just going to slip stitch in the first single crochet to join and chain one. So now this is when things change up a bit. I'm wanting this tail to curve. So in order to get it to do that, we're going to decrease the first two stitches, the last two stitches, and then we're going to increase over on this side. So we'll do a single crochet two tog across the first two. So pull up a loop, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. We'll just do one single crochet in the next, and we'll do two single crochet in the next, two single crochet in the next. So those are our increases. One single crochet in the next, and then we're going to decrease the last two stitches. So go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, Go right into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and then slip stitch to join. And we're going to keep doing this for a total of six rounds. So our first two were just normal, normal. so we made the ring with the eight stitches and then we worked around eight. And then for the next six, we're doing the tog and the increases. I'm just going to stick my tail in there. So let's work through it again. Chain one, work our decrease across the first two, work a single crochet in the next, and then we're going to increase. So two in that stitch and then increase also in the next stitch. Work one single crochet in the next stitch and then a tog decrease across the last two. So I've made two rounds of that and I need to make four more. So I'm going to um, just complete those off camera and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so I ended up doing one more round. So this is how you can kind of count. So my starting right here, and then you kind of have these bumps that you can kind of count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm just gonna pull back that last decrease because we wanna change the color. So I'm doing the decrease but I need to yarn over now with the linen. And then we'll slip stitch to join. And now what I want to do is just cut the black because we don't need it anymore. Okay, and I'm going to do a round with the linen doing the same thing. So we're going to work, and I'm going to just crochet over those tails as I go. So we'll do a decrease across the first two. Work one in the next. Work two in the next. work two single crochet in the next work one in the next and then a decrease 
across the last two. I'm just gonna tuck my tails inside now, slip stitch that to join, chain one, and now you can see how we've got this nice little curve going on with our tail. And now we're just gonna work a single crochet in every stitch around. So I have enough of a curve worked into the tail now that we're just going to go around. So we're staying at eight stitches throughout. Just chain one and just keep working around. So I'm gonna work up, up a bunch of rounds off camera just to kind of see the length. I'm thinking probably about here. So maybe about 10 rounds. So I'm gonna work those up and see exactly how many rounds I think you should make for the tail. Okay, so so far I've worked up 10 and I think I want a little bit more of the linen. So I'm gonna go around a little bit more. So there's 11 of the linen. So that brings up, us up to a total of 20 so far. And I think I'm gonna do two more making a total number of rounds of 22. So I'll just finish those rounds off camera. Okay, so I have the tail finished. I'm just gonna fasten off with a little bit of a tail for seaming it to the blanket. And you're just gonna seam this to the back center of the blanket. You could stuff with a little bit of polyester fiber fill if you want, but it's not, I don't think it's necessary with the bulky yarn. So for the tail, I just measured out the center back of the blanket and I've just been seaming it on and make sure when you seam it up, you're closing the hole. Once you get that on, you can just weave in your ends. 